Good evening and welcome to our COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. Here are some of the highlights this hour. Today, former President Goodluck Jonathan encourages citizens to follow the NCDC guidelines on COVID-19. Presidential Task Force asks Nigerians to take responsibility, expresses worry over rising figures. We examine why a flatter and lower curve is much better in stopping the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. And British Prime Minister Boris Johnson to explain lockdown ease in press conference today. At the moment, Nigeria is nearing the 5,000 mark of confirmed cases in the country. So all attention is now geared towards achieving a downward curve to the coronavirus pending when a vaccine is found. It is called flattening the curve, a term public health officials use all the time. Experts say taking strong steps to slow the spread of coronavirus will help communities and individuals. An outbreak anywhere can go everywhere. And right now, what we need to do is try and limit the spread in our communities. The presidential task force believes that an easy way of making this happen is when people obey the guidelines. So a collective action and evidence-based recommendations to flatten the curve. On our theme this evening, we focus on keeping the figures down as far as the virus is concerned. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, 778 patients have been discharged and 143 deaths recorded, putting the total number of confirmed cases in the country at 4,399. Only yesterday, 248 new cases were recorded across 17 states. A regional breakdown of the cases shows Lagos at the highest in the southwest and the country, with 1,845 cases, followed by Kano in the northwest with 602 cases. The FCT, third highest in the north central with 356 cases. Borno in the northeast with 185 cases. While the South Sao Edo leads with the highest cases, 79. Inugu leads others in the southeast with 10 confirmed cases. Former President of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, is making his first statement ever about the coronavirus pandemic. He joins in calling all citizens of the country to follow the protocol laid down by the NCDC. Speaking in Yenagua at a forum organized by the People's Democratic Party in Bayasa State, the former president commends the governor, Doye Diri, for his efforts in enlightening the people on the coronavirus. Today, I say, let me come and extend my greetings to you and encourage you to do what is right. And you are taking leadership at a period that, of course, the whole world is like fighting a world war, a war that rifles and explosives are not used, a war that everybody is either a combatant or an informant a part of the management of the war. In one way or the other, you are involved in managing a coronavirus epidemic called COVID-19 or COVID-19. We are all involved. And I'm quite pleased that as I came in, everybody, including the governor, is wearing the traditional face mask. So I'm happy that people are keeping to the protocols as defined by the Center for Disease Control is key, but face mask alone will not save us. What impresses me most is the social distancing. If we are crowded here, I would have left because I wouldn't want the people to say, oh, President Jonathan was also there. One by our sons, we are pushing themselves. That social distance is more critical than even wearing the face mask. Because even as I look across to the people, I've seen people wearing face masks and still touching their faces. <laughs> then it makes the face mark useless. But if you maintain that short distance, you will be, will be okay. 
Let's go over to Benue State, where the State Action Committee on COVID-19 intercepted a Boko-bound 15-seater bus from Lagos, conveying one person who tested positive uh, from Lagos, but decided to return home uh, following an advice from his mother. Briefing journalists after the expanded meeting with the state governor, uh, Mr. Samuel or Tom, chairman of the committee, says all 15 passengers, including the positive case from Lagos, have been isolated and their samples taken to Abuja for testing. This is a directive also from the federal government. No church or mosque should operate for now. Everybody is not having it easy. I'm not having it easy too. I'll tell you the truth. The person that contracted this virus that I was mentioning yesterday was very normal when I even saw him, even yesterday. Thank God I maintained social distance. But when I heard it this morning, I was thinking whether I should go for a second test again. <laughs> no, that's the truth. Because you won't know. The person that uh, brought it and infected the doctor didn't know that that was going to happen, but it happened. If we had only that first case alone, and nothing has happened to today, it will even be a different thing. But I'm telling you today that we have two more cases in addition to the two we have, and we have not tested all. And the presidential task force is seeking stronger collaboration with states in the war against COVID-19. The secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, wondered why states have not taken advantage of the offer by the Catholic bishops of Nigeria on the use of their clinics nationwide as isolation centers. As part of efforts to support the states in the establishment of isolation and treatment centers, I wish to remind our state governors that the Catholic Bishops' Conference has offered and volunteered all the 425 hospitals and clinics that belong to the Catholic Mission nationwide for adaptation and use as isolation centers. Governors in the various states are encouraged to please approach Catholic archbishops and bishops in their states to access these facilities. The Presidential Task Force has also continued to receive, rather sadly, reports about challenges facing the frontline health workers. They have received threats to lives, experienced detention by patients, they are actually nursing to health and suffer other forms of harassment. Let me underscore the fact that these frontline workers constantly put their lives on the line to make sure persons infected are provided with the best care possible to enable them to become healthy citizens again. It is therefore inhuman and unacceptable that patients engage in acts of locking them up and making demands that these frontline offices, most of the time, do not have the capacity to address. For the Minister of Health, progress has been made in Kano after the uh, Ministry deployed some expert teams to the state to help in capacity building. He says investigation into the Kano mystery deaths is not completed yet. He also spoke about the collaboration with Madagascar on possible treatment to COVID-19. They have achieved several milestones, including enhancing community confidence, continuous training and capacity building to increase the pool of trained healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, hygienists, food handlers, etc. The surveillance and epidemiology pillar organized a training session for state workers who have commenced field work. And the investigation into unexplained deaths in the state 
is yet to be, com to be completed and submitted the cure from Madagascar. Uh, that is something that has been making the news and uh, we have the uh, promise of being able to get sample. We understand that it is uh, something called Artemisia annua, which uh, also grows here. But we would like to, if we get that sample, compare it with the strain here, whether they are exactly identical, or whether they are two different, I mean, similar, or uh, they are identical, and then see what properties it has. Uh, things like that are subjected to uh, analysis to find out what works in there, how it works, and uh, uh, the use in getting a cure. Obviously, all countries in the world are interested in finding a cure, and uh, we are not different. So how effective are our social distancing and lockdown easing measures? Joining us on ways to flatten the contagion curve is Dr. Blossom Madwa Fokwa, a public health physician. Thank you for joining us. He joins us via Skype. Thank you so much for having me. All right. How would you say we're doing since we last spoke with our efforts so far to stopping mm -hmm. the spread of the virus? Okay, so the last time we spoke, it was just before the, ease, the easing of the lockdown commenced. And obviously, people are out and about. The recommendations have been made, um, wearing, your, wearing out of, of face coverings when you're out, frequent hand washings, but we, we can see that people are not adhering. We know that like the Lagos State government recommended uh, protocols for transport workers, and we see that those are also not being adhered to. So that is, that is really, really a big challenge, and it's something that we need to address. We, we have a partial lockdown in, you know, some different places across the country. Do you think it is sustainable in stopping the spread? And, and this is when you look at the regional spread, for example, Kano in the northwest, uh, Bono in the northeast, the FCT in the north mm -hmm. central. How do you think we can manage mm -hmm. things? The, the UK is saying that they're going to rely on people using their common sense, for example. Okay, so, so this is where um, what we call engineering controls in public health comes in. So, so you, at, at some point, you, you don't rely on the individuals because you are the professional and you understand the consequences. Like the outbreak that we're seeing in parts of the northeast of the country, we have to have some enforced lockdown measures. So you're not going to rely on the people to have... Um, the good sense to stay home if they don't have anything to do outside or to not gather in large groups. Those things have to be enforced because you know that one person um, having the infection, it's not just a problem, but the vulnerable people around that one person that will get, that will get the infection and will die from the infection, that will be your bigger problem. So enforcement is so critical and it's so key. What are your thoughts? Because some weeks ago, um, we were not willing to use the face mask in terms of uh, insisting on it, but, but governments have since made a U-turn on that. Um, but yeah. we're still having mixed advice from sciences. Do you think that it should be a legal requirement for everyone to have their face masks on? Absolutely, it should be a requirement. The, People need to understand why the face coverings, I'm going to say co face coverings because not everyone will have a mask. Face coverings is key because if you have the infection and you're asymptomatic, so basically you, you have the infection but you, you feel okay, you just feel like the regular person next to you. If you do have a face covering, then you protect the people around you. So, so that's why it's so important because asymptomatic spread is, is very strong with this um, virus. So it's, it definitely should be a requirement. All right. Dr. Blossom Madwa Fokwa, a public health physician, thank you so much for joining us on the program. You're most welcome. 
So to come on our COVID-19 update, we look at the global efforts to curbing the coronavirus and a frontline worker joins us on the second belt of the program. Join us again. Let's now bring you some of the efforts of state governments across the country on stopping the spread of COVID-19. We begin in a quiet bomb state where the governor, Udomi Manuel, says the excellent performance of the state's incident management committee has led to 100% recovery of patients who tested positive to the coronavirus. The governor in an interview today says so far a total of 17 confirmed cases have been recorded in the state, of which 10 have been successfully treated and discharged. Two have died. He also spoke on the 300-bed isolation center under construction in the state, uh, where he said the facility will be completed within the next week, adding that more ventilators will be added to the 13, which the state already has. And the first fatal case of COVID-19 recorded in Undo State earlier today had renal problem, uh, which condition complicated his COVID-19 treatments. That's from the governor, Rotimia Kodolo, who disclosed this while addressing newsmen of the development in Akure. According to him, six COVID-19 patients in the state who test, have tested negative twice have been discharged, adding that nine others are being treated at the Infectious Diseases Hospital, Akure. And the Imo State Governor, who was a dim has signed into law two new bills passed by the National Emo State House of Assembly. Uh, they are the Emo Waste Management Agency Bill and the Consolidation of Property and Land Use Charges Bill. According to the government, it continues to putting measures in place to combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Dr. Obi Nzako is a trauma and orthopedic surgeon at the University of Toronto, and he joins us on the program via Skype. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Tell us, how is COVID-19 challenging healthcare systems in Toronto, where you are? Good afternoon. Um, I think uh, it's actually been not quite the way we expected in Canada. I have to commend the Canadians. They took massive action very early. So all surgeries, which were non-essential, were cancelled. Uh, and um, our ITUs were expanded. And actually now most of the hospitals in the city are running at probably about 50% capacity. So I think that at the moment uh, it was challenging in the beginning, but that was initially just dealing with the fear, getting enough PPE, uh, implementing the social distancing. But at the moment it seems to be working, and uh, I hope... Yeah, actually starting our descent now on that peak. So if you were to assess Canada's efforts so far in flattening the curve, we understand Canada has over 60,000 coronavirus cases. How would you say they're doing? Uh, I think that, as I said, I have to commend the Canadian government. When you look and compare it to, say, like the United Kingdom or even to the Americans, they really struggled to implement lockdown. Uh, I think... Um, the, the people didn't react to it very well. And as a result, you see that they have got two of the highest death rates in the world, whereas comparatively, Canada's death toll is extremely low. We didn't really get a sharp peak. So there's discussions now about how and when to ease the lockdown. I think we have definitely flattened the curve. The risk now, obviously, is that we ease the lockdown and then we get the peak, which we've seen happen in other countries. Uh, so I, I would say I would say we have successfully flattened the curve in Canada. What's your take um, on Nigeria and the strategies to reducing the spread? Uh, some people have said that we need to readapt and perhaps change our response. Um, how do you think we're faring? Um, if you look purely at the numbers, I would say that Africa seems to be doing relatively well, but the numbers can be misleading. Misleading because the numbers are only a reflection of your testing strategy. And at the moment, I think the testing strategy in Nigeria is probably inadequate. Uh, we definitely need to do more tests. If you look at like the United States, with 1.4 million confirmed cases, and the UK has got, I think, 200,000 confirmed cases. And really being able to tackle this disease, starting in um, I think that's going to be focused because even the World Health Organization has actually said that they are fearful of the continent's ability to contain this virus should it spread. And my own personal fear, having seen how aggressively this does spread, how contagious this disease is, 
it, I think that the only real treatment is going to be prevention. So for me, I think that efforts need to be more focused on more aggressive testing, isolating cases. Um, and then in addition to that, we need to better prepare for a, a huge peak if it does come, and that would mean increased hospital spaces. Uh, it's, yes, it's the same thing we've seen elsewhere, but fortunately, Africa has the benefit of learning from what's elsewhere in the world, hopefully. All right, we appreciate your time, Dr. B. and uh, Zach, called trauma orthopedic surgeon at the University of Toronto. Thank you for joining us. No problem. And for the Prime Minister, talking about the British Prime Minister now, it's been a busy day, but there's still more to come as the uh, Mr. Boris Johnson is expected to answer questions from the public and the media in a, around an hour. He will be accompanied, we hear, by his chief advisers. But let's bring you a report of the global update of the coronavirus pandemic. The British government has advised the people on other measures to curb the spread of the infection, asking people to stand side by side instead of facing each other, washing clothes regularly and making sure rooms are ventilated. London commute will also be very different when people start to get back to work, as capacity on buses and the underground railway will be reduced by 85%. France today began easing its lockdown with millions going back to work after eight weeks. Shops are reopening, many pupils are returning to primary schools and people will not need travel certificates when they leave home. The capital, Paris, however, remains under tighter controls. In a surprise move this Monday, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that from Tuesday, the nationwide lockdown will be eased and businesses will go back to work. This is despite the country now having the third highest number of confirmed infections worldwide. In Germany, Chancellor Angela Merkel is stressing that people need to continue keeping their distance from one another and covering their mouths and noses as the country eases some of the restrictions it had imposed to slow the spread of the virus. Finally, Senegal's holy city of Touba is fighting a second wave of COVID-19 infections, dashing hopes that swift action by authorities had stopped the new coronavirus from spreading in the one-time epicenter. From the Nigeria Center for Disease Control's website, you can access the revised guideline for businesses to operate smoothly during this period and other public health advisory with regular updates on the COVID-19 regulations and several guidelines on how indeed what it means by social distancing. It's the same with the World Health Organization, the light feed. Each moment there are regular updates about the spread of the pandemic. The strategy on their website guides the public health response at both national and subnational levels, including practical guidance for strategic action that is tailored to the local context. That's our COVID-19 edition on Channels Television. Another update comes your way again at 9 p.m. In the meantime, stay with Channels Television, your home for the news for other updates. I'm Minister Tomoka. Stay home. Bye for now. <laughs>